Right, so good morning everybody. I hope you're doing well. Welcome back to Astrospace Technologies. It's good to see you. Uh, it's, it's been a while again. I have a number of projects that are basically complete, like the videos are done. They're just missing the final testing simply because I've been struck by another extended bout of what you'd call unfavorable weather. The wind. Not good. Not good for aircraft testing, not good for rocket testing. So I'm in a bit of a spot here, but whatever. Um, so in the meantime, I have a project that I've been meaning to do actually for a number of, you know, uh, a long period of time. I've been thinking about it for a while and I'm finally doing it. So you can see it behind me because I've actually already completed it. So this video will show you how I built it. Well, what is it? Um, well, it's, it's a plastic bottle. Hey, uh, but m more specifically, it is turning a plastic bottle into a tank, right? A tank that you can pressurize. So you can fill this with air, well not fill this with air, it's already got air in it, but you can just, you know, use it as is and use it to store compressed air for various things. You, know, you, could, do, you could do a whole wealth of things with compressed air from, you know, maybe a gas thruster to HPA gel blasters even. I'd, I'm, not to, I'm not here to judge. Um, you could, you know, you could put water in it, use high pressure water, you could make a silly little hose potentially or some sort of strange uh, super soaker sort of thing I guess. Um, or as I hope to do eventually, you can put maybe some fuel in it of some variety and use it for some low level, uh, very simple rocket propulsion or jet engines. So that's pretty cool. So. Yeah, I've got this, and we'll have a look at how I did this, but first, we'll have a look at actually a what I think is a pretty important part of this, and something that excited the heck out of me when I built it a couple days ago. This is a little um, servo-actuated valve. Specifically, it, it's an airflow valve from a fish tank, but this is very cool, and I like it a lot, and this is going to be with this hose attached to the end of there so you can electronically control it as you'd need to for you know various use cases so let, let's uh, this is not my file I'll, I'll just say that this is from thingiverse it's a very good design though um so i think first we'll have a look at how i made this I'm feeling pretty excited right now have a look at that look how beautiful that looks it's printing so well it just looks incredible so as you can see with that sort of shape we've got a servo that goes in there uh, you use that little round thing, that's a linkage between the servo and a, uh, the top of a fish tank air valve. So then you've got a servo actuated valve. This is coming along really well and I'm actually really excited. Oh, it's done. Look at that. Absolutely beautiful. Look at this. Absolute beautiful parts. A little bit of stringing here and there, but stringing never killed anyone. Look at that. So I can't test this bit yet, but this is what attaches to the end of the servo and the start of the valve. I don't have the valve yet, but let's, let's put the servo in. Oh, look at that. Absolutely beautiful. I won't put the lid on because I need to unscrew the servo arm, but that is just... that's immaculate. Okay, so to continue sort of the assembly of this, we need one of these double control horns. I'll just put that on there and I'll screw that in quickly so it, so it stays where I want it to. Look at that, isn't that good? Um, put this fella on there and now we have a pretty good understanding of where it needs to sit. We can start clipping those edges off. So if we get it pretty centered. Went for a bit of a spin there. Let's just trim that off a little bit better. Oh, I'll probably have to flip it this way. There we go. Okay, so I think now, with that like well with that as it is, that'll fit right there. And maybe look at that. So all that need now it now needs now. All that needs now is the valve, and then we've got ourselves a nice little servo actuated valve unit. Sweet. Yeah, so we've got our servo valve module done here. Uh, to continue, I've just gone to the shops and got the remaining bits that we need. So the first thing, I, I've got a stockpile of these just for this project. Sort of these particular long soda bottles already look a lot like propellant tanks, but they're very... They're actually much stiffer than your average Coke bottle, for example. So we've got that. And the next bit... Tubeless bike valves. So that's how you uh, pressurize the unit, right? Uh, next thing was the valve for this unit, right, from the fish shop. Now, as I might have been worried of initially, these 
ends here don't ex or don't protrude enough from the holes to really secure it into the cap here so what we've ended up doing is we've just got some tubing and just a little manual plastic valve um, so what I'll be doing here is we put the bike valve in uh, in this end here right and then where the cap is we have this valve goes in there yeah that's it Maybe. It's getting through, it's just not really getting through, you know? So We've also got on a bit of an angle. The assistant has bailed on me. Uh, the Dremel didn't work quite as well as we wanted, so now we're going to, um... One of these folks, a handsaw or whatever, I'm just going to see how that goes. Okay, since the video wasn't particularly clear, I'll just show you, we were doing a little bit of post-processing to get the valve to work. So we had to file down this end, so it could actually fit on the fish tank valve. Uh, and now with that... Okay. Yeah, anyway, with that on there, you notice that this handle would have been protruding a bit, so we had to cut that down. Otherwise, it would have not fit actually in the unit, and it wouldn't have been able to spin. But now with that removed, mounts in perfectly, and is uh, perfectly capable of rotating to its fullest extent. So okay, so we've got the valve out. wired up to an Arduino Nano, so we can control the servo. Um, in initial testing, I discovered pretty quickly that the valve is a bit too stiff for the servo to open so I put a little bit of what's called inox I believe on it and that has loosened it up a fair bit. Um, so fr from some preliminary testing I've found that for the open position we want uh, 5 degrees and 120 degrees I think for it, sorry, 5 degrees for close, 120 for fully open. So let's just, let's try that out, let's upload the code. You should be able to hear it, you probably won't be able to see it open, but... Well, look at that, you can see it. So, as you can see there though, it doesn't stay in place because I need to uh, put some screws in to, you know, hold the valve where it needs to be and also a tube in this end to stop this valve, sorry, this outlet from moving. But yeah, so that opens it and actually you can see that there, so that's pretty cool. And let's upload the code. I don't know what I clicked there. Upload the code to close it. And there you go. So yeah, as you can see, I definitely need to put down the screws and put a tube in this end to stop the valve from moving. But that's pretty good, I think. Um, now, when I actually use this, I am going to have to power the servo externally from, from the Arduino. Just so it can get the current it needs to move at a really, you know usable speed. But other than it's it's leaking I think. Oh no it's not Oh <laughs> it holds All right. All right. Whoop. That's 30. Sealed, certainly. Not this side, though. You're definitely leaking from the sides. So after last night, I um, added some hot glue around... Sorry, not hot glue. I added some super glue on top of the hot glue around here to try and seal it, because that's where our issues were. So let's test this. Um, on 10 PSI. I hear no sound. We're cool, it's working. Pretty cool, pretty cool. So if I just twist this. There it is, it's ready to go, all done. So that probably about does it for today. I've had a really, really good time. Uh, working on in this video actually it's been quite a fun project for me so um yeah that's, that's basically it 
I'm really excited for future projects, though, where I intend to use the components that we worked on today. So keep, keep your eyes out for that, because I think those will be quite interesting. Um, but that, that's, that's, pro that's probably about it. So thank you so much for watching. I hope you have a really good day, and, and if you've enjoyed the video, you know, like it, subscribe it, share it with friends. It, it lets me know that people enjoy the content. But, yeah, thanks for watching.